Uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Um, I want to make a an explanation of the noise you hear in the background. It's the uh, Eid celebrations post Ramadan, and that's where I'm at the Eid ground. And there are thousands of Muslims here. We just myself and my Amir here, Yusuf Cortez. We found a quiet spot, the best we could, on the side of a building. So um, if we can only, I will say, if we can only collect. Uh, the thousands of people here right here now, we would be 10 meters up the road, I can tell you that, in our movement. And so um, we just have to develop that organizability amongst ourselves. There are thousands of people here believing in the exact same thing that are basically unorganized, but the potential is there you know, for a mighty strong movement. So just giving props to my Muslim sisters and brothers. So that's why I am. So I, I caught uh, our comrade Chimarangel's wonderful presentation I miss uh, Comrade Youssef's, and um, I, I was glad to catch uh, Comrade Sister uh, Betty's presentation. So, yes, the, the prison, political prisoner working group, um, you know, since slavery, since we were brought here, uh, there's always been political prisoners. Not so much named such, using that relatively new terminology to recognize it, but any slave that's running away, any slave that's been rebellious, any slave that's took, taken the life of his slave master and got captured, you know, uh, that's those are political prisons and prisons of war. Any of those forms of resistance have always been the case. This is nothing new, modern day phenomenon. So, but I would like to uh, uh, segue into the support of political prisoners um, uh, from the comments that Chimarango made when I first tuned in. And it's very, it's connected. It's connected in terms of how we can build a network strong enough to free our comrades and our sisters and brothers, our warriors, our freedom fighters in prison. How can we do that? How can we, how can we effectuate uh, and make real the slogan, the decade old slogan of power to the people? And power to the people. When you say power to the people, inshallah, you're not talking about a small group of people. That's a numerical equation, not just qualitative. It's numerical. In a place of 334 plus million people, it has to be numerical strength in that. And so the question is, how can we build that strength in this day and age? Because we haven't been able to as such. Matter of fact, we slipped a lot of ground since the heyday of the Black Liberation Movements. I was imprisoned during the, um, the 80s and such uh, and see how the crack cocaine epidemic and the drugs ravaged our community, the counterintelligence onslaught that drove so many of us to our graves or to the walls of prisons for decades and decades and decades. And the gross materialism and the use of the media to brainwash and, and and drive that 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 wedge into our hearts and gut us out, gut out our manhood, gut out our sisterhood, and make us weak cowards. Because the saying goes that it's hard to liberate a slave that's comfortable with their oppression. And the United States can make your oppression very comfortable, and it can individualize it so that you won't see the suffering of a homeless person on the street when you're driving down the street in a Mercedes Benz. All right, so there you go. That's where we at. So I'm going to pick up a little bit in the brief time that I have, inshallah, to uh, to build on what Chairman Rango said and what perhaps other comrades have said before uh, before I actually got on to here. And that is on the uh, connecting us struggle at this particular time with the genocide of our sisters and brothers in Gaza and the West Bank and Palestine itself. And the whole initiative to vote uncommitted uh, opt out, or whatever the case may be, whatever your ballot says to do, uh, but not to vote in any way, fashion, or form for anyone, any candidate that uh, supports uh, genocide in any way, fashion, or form. That means it probably includes most of any all Democrats and any and all, and all Republicans, I'm quite sure. So politics is local, so it starts local with the primaries, but the general notion is, number one, we have to join in some way, fashion, and form with a meaningful way in the protest to stop the genocide in Gaza. We have to do that. And there's only so many coals in the fire at this point in time that we can utilize. Leveraging the vote, opt out, uh, no vote for genocide, all these initiatives, no vote no, non-committed is one way. May not be the only way. If you got another way, then I hope you, you have the microphone on this platform. If you haven't already, you can explain it. But this is very significant. So. A lot of sisters and brothers, but I don't vote, I don't participate. But no, this is a strategy. So, so just try to be objective enough to see how we can stop 
you know, uh, this genocide, Gil Scott Heron said the revolution won't be televised. Well, the genocide is being televised. You can watch it every day of children being dug out the rubble. And, and so the comfort that we think we have in this country is the same comfort that a lot of these Muslim nations around uh, Palestine and these uh, African nations in, 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 in the continent of Africa and nations around the world, why they are reticent, why they're hesitant, while they're cowardly, while they're holding on to their self-vested interests in their country because they have been bedfellows with the, with the Zionists, they've been bedfellows with the United States government for, and the European powers for so long, sucking off that nipple of support that doesn't trickle down to their people. And now the slave master is doing just too much. And now they're in a, in a quandary as far as how do they speak out against the slave master that they have been in bed with for so long. And the same thing with the people in the United States you know, about what if we don't vote for the, the, the Democrats? What if we get Trump in? And like Betty, one of the comments just said, it doesn't really matter. We still have to face our own struggle. But here's the connection that I want to make, sisters and brothers, as it leads to political prisons in these types of protests. The, the leveraging in the vote, regardless if you normally vote or not, if you don't vote or not, uh, and this in the electoral school here is teaching us a lot about how to utilize our vote. And I hope we are embracing that. But it's just a tact. It doesn't mean you're selling your soul. It doesn't mean that you're supporting the the the, 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 the United States government system. It's meaning that we are working with what we have to get to another level, to get to another space where we can have more power. So when we say we demand the freedom of a political prison, we're not just talking about a group of 20, 30, 40 people. You understand what I'm saying? If you think that's how far it goes, if you think it goes further than that, then you need to look at the record and see what's happening. All right. Why Leonard Peltier doesn't have that type of support? Why Mumia uh, Abu Jamal's support is faltering and faltering and faltering, and why he has so many ailments, and we have to almost literally be, e.g., beg for support amongst the people for these freedom fighters. So now we have to figure out how we can leverage that. So number one, we need to, as human as human beings, as victims of, of genocide ourselves, a slow genocide for four hundred years. We need to support people of color around the world that are victims of genocide and what's happening now in Gaza. We have to make a stand. These protests just cannot be led by Palestinian sisters and brothers who we do have solidarity with, but they just can't always be led by that because our protests have to lead into organizing. We have to lead to organizing our own infrastructure on the ground. So it just can't be a protest. It has to be a protest that's directly connected to what we're doing. And what we're doing is leveraging our voting. What we're building, doing is building a network. I propose to the Huwa movement uh, and to the Black to Back Coalition, and as you may have been hearing, and I know I don't have the time to flush it out totally, that we have an initiative called Building the People's Senate. And all that is is to network uh, the local groups, the local organizations across the United States of America into a viable, functioning uh, network where we have representatives from different areas and we have our own Senate. So um, for lack of a better way to, for you to visually understand this, we have the United States Senate for what it's worth for us. You have the House of Representatives, namely the Congress for what it's worth for us. We wanna have our own people Senate. We wanna have it pervasive enough and powerful enough that when we say we demand the release of a political prisoner, uh, that we will have those organizations that network into this body. Uh, that we have their voice from California to New York, from, from, from North Dakota to Texas, we have integrated a system of representation where we can prioritize issues. We can prioritize and delegate resources the best we can based upon our capacity. This is a new type of strategy, new in the sense that it's led by revolutionaries. It's led by people of color, you know, and so that's what we're attempting to do. And I'll send that information. And so it may not be this year, may not be next year, because this is a long race that we're in. The revolution as far as we're concerned, won't happen by the end of the year on November the 5th. I can guarantee you that. And when this genocide is over with and when they decimate Gaza, and the United States pumps up billions of dollars into that area to colonize it, to form some puppet neocolonial government there. And while we all watch and move on our way to the next genocide that happens somewhere else, Congo, Sudan, Haiti, wherever it is, where we'll we're reacting in protest. We have to build a different type of structure and movement that's going to even wrap around uh, the Black is Back Coalition is going to wrap around 
the Black Alliance for Peace is going to wrap around the Jericho movement is going to wrap around the spirit of Mandela is going to wrap around any organization that's on this platform right now and build us in a network that's not necessarily based upon our blackness. And I can tell you that right now. And if you think that's working, then I need you need to pinch yourself on your ass and look around you because it's hard to liberate a, a slave that's comfortable for their reality. And like I said, Harry, Harry Tubman is professed to have said, even though it's fact checked that she didn't say it, but it doesn't matter because the message is true. I freed 300 slaves. I could have freed a thousand more if they only knew they were slaves. If we in the United States only knew that we were slaves and oppressed, while, while we have running water, flushing toilets, when I leave here, when you leave off this call, you'll go to your home, your toilet works, you have heat and air conditioning, you have this. In the United States, we can make statements and comments against this this, this fascist government, some of us may get arrested. You see what they're doing to our chairman, but that's not happening to all of us. As long as they can isolate it and individualize it, they can make us not concerned about the next person and the next person. You know, they can just individually pick off our leaders and let the other people go on with that protest. That protest is necessary for the function of the United States government because they can always boast and brag. I'm, I'm done in a minute. They can always boast and brag that this is a democratic society. And look what, because in another country, you can't do that. You can't do that in Haiti. You can't do that in the Sudan. You can't do that in the Congo. You can't do that in any, in any African country. You can't even say anything about their government and criticism. So the United States can boast and brag about our democratic rights here. And it makes it very difficult for people to see that we're even oppressed that we're even oppressed and what political prison we have. So I'll close on this. We want to build a people's Senate. We want to break out, we want to, like a Kung Fu master, you want to scrap everything you did, take off your black belt, put on a white belt and learn how to fight again. And maybe then we'll come up with something new and innovative enough that will take us out of the dogma of having 20 and 30 people on a doggone webinar and think we're making progress. That's my position. And I don't want to die fooling myself that we're making progress without realizing that something else has to be done in 2024. So I top salute to our chairman. You know, Jericho has your back, you know, when it comes to the trial and any finances that you need. Uh, I may not be on every call, but I'm there material. I'm there to provide material assistance. And you know, that's real. You know, that's what's needed when we have to pay for lawyers and things of this nature. I'm there. We're there to represent political prisons. We're there to support the Black and Black Coalition, the Uhuru Movement and African People's Socialist Party. I end as I begin with Assalamu alaikum. All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum.